My name is Diane. I am an empath. And, as you've probably already guessed, this is not my real voice. However, the words within this video are all coming from me. If you cannot get past the AI voice, then I have put a link in the show notes to the written version of this episode. But otherwise, sit back and enjoy today's installment. I often say that empaths are a very misunderstood bunch. So much so, we often get misconstrued or just plain attacked for discussing the way we experience the world. Which can certainly be frustrating. As many of you know, I have been writing articles for empaths for over 10 years now. I started back in 2011. In fact, it was on the 30th of June 2011, that I published my first article, Being an Empath. Over the years I have seen many derogatory comments and misinterpretations of our empath traits. And, since starting to publish video posts on YouTube, I am seeing it all the more. So, in light of that, today I present you with some of the myths and misrepresentations of an empath I have come across whilst posting articles. 10 Empath Myths Myth 1. Empaths are vulnerable narcissists. Everyone carries at least one trait that could fall under the umbrella term of being a narcissist. But it always baffles me why an empath so often gets compared to one. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen comments saying how empaths are really quiet, introvert or vulnerable narcissists. I wrote an article about the subject, several years ago. I will link it in the show notes. The one question that always comes to my mind is why someone would compare an empath who generally puts the needs of others ahead of their own, who looks out for the underdog, and has a deep level of empathy, to a narcissist. But I always answer my own question, and that is because people attack what they don't understand. Also, if someone has been rejected by an empath, they will often do anything to discredit them. Myth 2. Empaths cannot feel other people's emotions. This is very much a myth. Feeling the energy of other people's emotions is what really makes an empath an empath. They may not always realize that when around other people, and feel strange sensations, that they are picking up on their emotions, but eventually they come to figure it out. Myth 3. An empath always knows what the emotions they feel in others represent. This is another myth. An empath does not automatically know what the emotions they feel in others signify. For example, certain pained or stressed emotions, such as anger or grief, can have a similar vibratory signature, and can be difficult to differentiate. However, over the years, and the more they work on themselves, many empaths become more attuned with what particular emotions stand for. This also makes them very good at reading people. But understanding what emotions represent in others is not always a given empath trait. Myth 4. An empath will always attract narcissists. This is a bit contradictory in that it can be both a myth and a fact that an empath will attract a narcissist. It all depends on the empath and the situation. On the one hand, an empath, with their kind and considerate nature, can draw in a narcissist, but on the other, they can also repel them with their mirroring ways. An empath can inadvertently reflect back what they pick up in another, and many people, especially narcissists, do not like to see their own reflection. However, it is a different story with a grandiose narcissist, as they do not tend to give off much in the way of emotional energy. Their own self-belief is so powerful that an empath could be caught off guard and taken in by them. Whatever the situation, once an empath has been burnt by a narcissist, they will generally avoid them like the plague. Myth 5. An empath is delusional. Yet another response I have seen in comments, that people who claim to be empaths are delusional. Although there are hundreds of thousands of empaths around the world, they are still in the minority. So, yes, I understand that if someone does not have the same experiences as an empath or feel the emotions the way they do, then it is very difficult for them to believe that anyone else can. The claim of an empath, that they can feel things others can't, may also seem to some like they are trying to make themselves special, and this also ties in with the claim that empaths are in fact quiet narcissists. 
Myth 6. Empaths are weak because they easily get addicted. Many empaths get addicted to certain substances, including food, as all humans do. But it is not because they are weak. Feeling the pains of the world so powerfully, an empath often wants to numb what they experience, and they do this with whatever gives a dopamine hit, the feel-good hormone. Things such as sugar, alcohol, wheat and other high-carb foods, as well as drugs, are just some of the vices that can increase dopamine, all of which can become very addictive. However, it is usually the case, that once an empath realizes what damage many of these addictive substances cause to the body and mind, often making things worse in the long run, they use their strong will to overcome these addictions. Myth 7. Empaths are lazy. An empath might get labeled as idle because they have the tendency to avoid doing anything that they do not like doing. But, in general, get an empath doing things that they love, and they will show you just how not lazy they are. So, yes, another myth. Myth 8. An empath is rude and unsociable. If an empath has taken on too much from their external world in the way of emotional energy, they may appear rude or even unsociable. This doesn't mean they are. They simply need a time out. But when they feel low, overwhelmed or down, it can be hard for them to pretend otherwise. Myth 9. Empaths don't like antiques. This is something I have had comments on over the years because it is on the list of 30 traits of an empath. Antiques can be items of incredible beauty, but they can also be quite energy dense. Meaning, that within cherished historical trinkets the energy of the previous owner or owners are often imprinted, which can feel weighted and heavy to an empath. And this is the reason why some empaths avoid antiques, because of their contained energy, and not because they don't like them. Myth 10. An empath has no people skills. This is one of the myths that is quite the opposite, an empath can have excellent people skills. But when around anyone who is inauthentic, or if they carry a lot of emotional pain, they may struggle to be themselves. Contradictive energy can impact an empath in some very weird ways, which might make them appear as if they are incapable of people interaction or have no social skills. So, there you go, 10 empath myths. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and that you are keeping happy and healthy in your own corner of the world. Until next time. Diane.